Imagine navigating the complexity of this thorny pathway for a moment. What comes to mind? The journey would undoubtedly be rough, wouldn't it? But envision, if interventions arrived, where hands joined together to clear the thorny pathway. The journey would then become shorter and smoother, wouldn't it? In a system without control, lacking regulation, or a non-state without accountability checkers, it's a king to traverse in a thorny pathway. Citizens, from the young to the old, face demoralizing obstacles. Yet, those who clear the path for accountability bring interventions that demand transparency, regulatory control, and integrity. It's positively with the government. Together, they ensure that amidst the complexities of governance, citizens have a voice to demand action from state actors. Let me take you on a journey to discover such institutions whose creative initiatives shone brightly enough to attract the attention of an organization that doesn't just honor unsolicited proposals without the indication of a track record of rethinking human situations, experiences, and processes. An organization that must deem you worthy enough to consider your proposals with the seriousness it deserves in impacting humanity and society for the better, the MacArthur Foundation. The Behavior Change Cohort, with the support of the MacArthur Foundation, has been pushing boundaries and breaking new frontiers, all in the endeavor to make interventions that resolve human and social concerns, enhance our experiences, make society more livable, while enabling development and progress towards a future that creates more meaning for Nigerians and one in which they can celebrate all that's noble in the human experience. Through innovative approaches, the organizations in this cohort are shifting norms, challenging biases, and transforming behaviors to foster lasting change and impact. What do they aim to achieve? What have they achieved? Let's find out. Before the MacArthur Foundation's support, Accountability Lab faced an uphill battle in impacting norms and delivering social value in a manner that makes governance work for citizens. Despite Asidawa's effort, the organization's reach was limited and it struggled to amplify positive narratives about Nigeria's public service. How have things changed? Before MacArthur supports for Accountability Lab Nigeria, one of the things we are grounded in is to how to make um, governance work for citizens in places where we operate. And two things we find very interesting is the lack of accountability from public servants and how this affects behavior, behavioral social norms problem in societies. Um, so we saw that niche um, to design our prog programs to see that we work around supporting active citizens, responsible leaders, as well as building accountable institutions and framing that based on accountability and behavior and social norms within society. And MacArthur had come through for us to see that while we are looking for people doing the right thing in public office and celebrating them, because we also found out that within the Nigerian society and elsewhere where we work, um, the media has like a negative news almost every day. Every morning you wake up, you wake up to some sort of depression, um, some so sort of news that doesn't even align with giving hope for the normal citizens. So we thought about creating positive messaging and positive um, images for Nigeria because we want to use the fact that we're supporting people who are doing the right thing to name and fame them to ensure that they are giving hope to people that there's hope for Nigeria with these people still working in the public service. We have the Nigerian police basically, for instance, where you have people who have lost trust in the Nigerian police and we found a couple of police officers who are doing the right thing. And we think that change is significant to create the trust and build the relationship with communities in where these public officers work. Um, in other places, we've seen procurement officers, public procurement officers in government institutions in Edo State and Ikiti State and Plateau State where we work. To also see that we are training public officers whom are building trust with their communities and ensuring like the service they are supposed to deliver through public procurements and projects um, which have been budgeted for in their state's um, budgets, creating that niche for people to trust in the system and to ensure that the service which the government delivers um, serves the public good. Uh, one of the significant changes we've seen is the capacity for staff 
um, and even volunteers and interns who have come to serve within the lab to see that they've grown from where they were before, to understand the nitty-gritty of how behaviors and social norms affect the issues which we face and seeing how we can help increase them beyond that. Um, our projects have also seen giving them the opportunity for that we, we have we've had about 36 volunteers across five years. So each year we have 36 volunteers across across each state who are doing the work for Accountability Lab. And we've seen them grown from um, where they were before to a place where they understand how to engage with the public um, public service officials, engage, engage with government officials in, in places where we work. So that change for us means in increasing capacity building and increasing knowledge when it comes to behavior change and social norms. The Akin Fadayi Foundation as a platform for action for eradicating corruption and promoting the virtues of good governance, encountered critical challenges in expanding its reach. This was in addition to remaining not well or fully realized in its endeavors of expanding citizens' perceptions of corruption while altering such antisocial behaviors, alongside addressing questions of social injustice and building impactful collaborations for social development. What has the organization's journey been like? One of my most fascinating quotes comes from one of America's religious leaders, Gordon Hickley. He lived between 1910 and 2008. He said, every good citizen adds to the strength of a nation. This formed the focal premise upon which we developed an overarching vision from the onset to modify our community's perceived and respond to corruption and remodel the same after the tripled strategy of understanding, call to action, and change process ownership. So, we designed our Corruption Ultimate Country Advocacy Drama Messages and it made with Sama Corruption Radio Series. The Corruption Ultimate Country Media Campaign was first of its kind in this country and luckily, we secure citizens by any on it. We have therefore leveraged opportunities of relatable storytelling and public dialogue to change the norm culture of corrupt practices. These campaigns have stimulated communities' capabilities to recognize the harmful effects of corruption and in spite of the paradigm shift. The introduction of the Flagit app was also a game changer particularly for marginalized groups, by providing a secure and anonymous channel to report corruption and social injustice. These are helped only empower our citizens to take action. They are also witnessed real-time consequences for offenders. By making the reporting process accessible and safe, especially for women and vulnerable populations, the Akin Fadi Foundation has contributed to a culture of accountability. Moreover, Efforts targeted engagement with marginalized groups, such as the What Women Can Do competition, has also challenged traditional gender norms and encouraged greater participation in governors and anti corruption efforts. This focus on inclusivity ensures that the fight against corruption involves all segments of society, which is essential for long term change. We also have been very intentional about strategic institutional collaborations through partnerships with institutions like the Federal Road Safety Corps and other key agencies, IAFF has worked to embed principles of integrity and accountability within these organizations. Training programs that incorporate gender equity and social inclusion, JESSE principles, have not only fine-tuned the internal processes of these institutions for effective management, we've also promoted a more inclusive and responsible work culture within them. Overall, Akifadi Foundation's comprehensive approach combining media, technology, grassroots engagement, like institutional partnerships, have all combined to shift social norms, minimize tolerance for corruption, and foster the community wide commitment to transparency and accountability. Al Abibiya Islamic Society, prior to the support of the MacArthur Foundation, encountered resistance from faith leaders in the unconventional way it sought to engage with them in its anti-corruption initiatives. Convincing Islamic clerics of the desirability in its unique pathway was tedious, if not difficult, and its impact was hindered by a nascent organizational structure and the lack of resources. How did they overcome this? What we, uh, we worked on 
the MacArthur funding project is uh, combating corruption through faith-based intervention. Uh, what does that word mean? It means that how do we stop corruption, or at least reduce it to barest money minimum through faith-based? We all know in Nigeria that uh, anything, most of us, we are all religious. And anything that we pass through religious houses, definitely we have an impact. But to the Muslims, it's even much more challenging. There is one challenge that not many people are aware of in the Muslim, among the Muslim leaders in Nigeria. The imams, nobody is paying them salary. They do not have money anywhere, anywhere. no any special deduction for them. So it means their life depends on the congregants. How do you now say somebody that that is the one feeding him, you now ask him to talk against him. You see, it's a great challenge. And that was the challenge that we tend to solve and by the special grace of God to the level where we are that because the imams or the religious leaders with all humility, unconsciously, they are supporting and abetting corruption because they have to survive. Not knowing that they are also doing a lot of things, but with our program, with our intervention, they are able to realize that this is what they are doing and we are able to so to say, mitigate it and uh, reduce it to the BRS manual. Before, the MacArthur Foundation's support, Anti-Corruption Academy of Nigeria relied on traditional training methods that fell short in addressing the deep-seated behavioral roots of corruption within public service. How did they address these gaps? The problem of corruption appears to have been internalized by public servants to the point that the public servants in this country or political office holders, public office holders in general, assume that corruption is normal. And the, the kind of social norms that existed then promoted normalizing, internalizing the fact that getting into public office is to get money from the office. And they did that so uh, craftily that they are ready for any pain as long as they gain the money out. Is it not going to court? After all, I could get the best lawyers if I have the money. After all, you could drag the case for as long as you want to drag it. Now, with funding from the Makato Foundation, which made possible the training we received from the Chatham House, we were able to infuse social norms and behavior change content into our curriculum. We now had to build a curriculum that has a marriage of the law and order uh, focus of training and then the behavioral change focus of training. So now we have a more comprehensive curriculum that has made it possible for us to be able to train more comprehensively among public servants. After developing this training curriculum, it also made it possible for us to reach out to critical stakeholders who will help step down this training. You see, we brought together about 73 civil society organizations, faith-based organizations, and uh, community-based organizations who together we looked at the implementation strategy developed with this funding and then how they too can step down training on implementation of the national ethics and integrity policy of the government of the country, which requires that apart from following the rules, uh, adhering to the laws, that there is also that social requirement of public officers and policymakers to stick to ethics, to stick to, to integrity. And because we had this pool of people working with us, they are now stepping down these uh, trainings to communities, to faith-based organizations, and to the society in general. Before MacArthur Foundation came in as a catalyst to its work, Arawa 24 struggled in vending its message to much of the critical stakeholders and constituencies that needed the benefits of this engagement. Then, it could barely harness the potentials of the media in promoting anti-corruption and positive behavioral change messaging maximally. But now, what has changed for them? 
Before we uh, started partnering with uh, Magato Foundations in promoting anti corruptions, we're operating at a local level in Dramas, and uh, actually our knowledge uh, doesn't advance to even understand how to incorporate a lot of visual storytelling messages into our contents. We usually just produce dramas that are purely entertainment without passing any messages. With the coming of Makato Foundation to Ario 24th work together with them, we are able to understand the impact and the importance of leveraging on social on the media production companies like Ario 24 televisions to pass on community positive messages that will help people, empower people, bring about behavioral change and shift in social norms and customs. The recognitions and the validations of the government, especially the Public Complaint and Anti-Corruption Commission for Kano State that applauded our work in what we are doing to combat corruptions without being asked or even supported by the government. Uh, the chairman of the commissions in an interview mentioned this in a post without we aware. Another report from National Bureau of Statistics mentioned that a lot of people from a research they have conducted in the northern Nigeria were able to resist corruptions in these days. And because of our dominant prayers in the northern part of the Nigerian region, demonstrate to us that this is a positive and welcome development that our organization is doing. Again, as a television channel, for you to evaluate our impact to see the solutions, you have to carry out some qualitative research surveys. BIT was able to conduct a research on one of our seasons that we have launched last year at the eve of the 2023 election. And the research comes with a finding that 76% of the populations that they were interviewed and have a questionnaire distributed were able to say that they have resisted corruptions due to watching of our productions contents. Griot Studios, before being supported by the MacArthur Foundation, had innovative ideas on how to reduce corruption by shifting attitudes and behaviors towards transparency and accountability, which were however hindered by the lack of resources in bringing them to fruition. How then did Griot Studios subsequently overcome this limitation and receive the breather that brought its vision to life? So I think that the, one of the most significant change within our organization um, due to this project that it is the, uh, I the incorporating our skill set as an organization, right? And this is basically as a result of the support of the foundation, you know, through the technical um, assistance that they gave and then the creative um, advisors um, who we worked with along the course of the project. Our organization aims to reduce corruption by influencing um, attitude and behaviors that support transparency and accountability, right? Um, before the Makoto project, our uh, funded project, uh, we had to, like, you know, to tackle this, pro we had the ideas actually to tackle these problems, but the necessary resources to implement them was kind of some, an area where we lacked in. Um, yeah, but with the Makoto um, funding, we developed these ideas, uh, we made, uh, which was made available through uh, various uh, multimedia um, channels. So, for instance, um, the political thriller uh, um, for the public, um, that, that sparked um, dialogue on the importance of the strong judicial system, and increased, it also increased um, the public's um, understanding of the importance of that judicial system in the electoral process. Yeah, and also for our mobile game, Jarvis Journey, um, we had an increased public awareness. Um, it increased players' knowledge of civic engagement and equipped them with the skills that they could use to better participate in, in the democratic process in Nigeria. We also had the documentary of NEPA, uh, which also increased public awareness of the power sector in particular. It also um, increased the understanding on the key players within the sector and also the corrupt practices that are basically contribute to the epileptic power supply um, in the country. Prior to the support of the MacArthur Foundation, Integrity Organization grappled with efforts to address the corruption gap between the public and private sectors. Beyond the nows, programming requires the resources to bring about strong collaborations or clear standards for enabling transparency across both sectors. Otherwise, 
the organization's impact would have remained limited. How did Integrity manage to get the Philip that enhanced its peculiar interventions? We have refined our messaging. I think at last we are seeing uptake. That is the biggest change, and uptake en masse. So the fact that we have excellent partners such as FRC and UNGC um, to help us create these tools and tips that people will be able to use no matter level of education um, as they pursue you know, better corporate governance um, and uh, administration over their businesses. I'm just seeing at last this uh, business case has finally penetrated the group that we have been hoping to reach. Um, the idea is we wanted to be able to do this at scale. At the beginning of the project, we worked with some excellent, excellent islands of integrity in various sectors. Um, and they really stood out um, and they were excellent partners. But now just the idea that this message is going out en masse and we're doing it both at the general level, but even at the sectoral level, we've now partnered with various other regulators of individual sectors to be able to apply these principles um, within uh, these individual industries to be able to respond to the risks that these specific industries face. So it's just interesting to see the beginning of the project, how we were able to pilot, you know, this idea with certain um, certain companies, and now being able to see it on mass for MSMEs, which represent, I believe, it's 90% of businesses in Nigeria and almost 50% of GDP and um, employment in the nation. So being able to see it um, at that scale now, as well as um, industry specific, I think that. Um, the best is yet to come, but that's been the most significant change so far. Lux Terra Leadership Foundation found it challenging to address dishonesty and unethical behavior within faith communities. Its reach in promoting behavioral change, particularly in the North Central region, was constrained or limited. What has the Foundation's journey to more impactful engagement been like? We've had an interesting six-year journey working with Mercato on an anti-corruption project. Um, but within Luxterra, we can summarize that journey to trying to address the issue of dishonesty among uh, Christian and Muslim faithfuls in Nigeria, focusing on the North Central Joe uh, political zone. We've had um, different target audience from pastors to imams to kids in secondary schools and uh, also to youth core members. The perspective of behavioral insight that the Makato project has given us opportunity of, uh, of learning and benefiting on, I would say is transformational because even among uh, people of faith, uh, the issue about evangelism um, can, can be tricky. I use the expression tricky because um, people seek to convert other people, but they are doing almost the exact opposite by the approach that they use. And the BI, um, behavioral insight uh, knowledge that we have gained as an organization from this, and uh, how to communicate rightly um, to bring about this change has been one significant benefit that Luxterra um, has gained from the project. Also, the learnings from how we do our own monitoring, evaluation, and learning has also impacted significantly on the level of impact that we've been able to achieve. So you've had people across board, like I said, people, pastors, imams, who have been um, on this job of evangelization for so many years, coming to a point after decades to say that I've probably been using the wrong methods in trying to get people changed within my congregation or society or family. Thank you, Luke Terra, for this opportunity. So those are the kind of things that we've heard from um, beneficiaries of our project. Before the Black Arthur investments in its work, Moving Image Limited struggled to communicate the complexities of corruption in a way that resonated with the public which hindered its ability to inspire the change it desired. How did the company break through this and a number of other barriers to wider public reckoning? Our organization is a communications outfit and we've been consulting for different organizations by working with MacArthur, 
really gave us that paradigm shift, that sh I mean, leap in knowledge of uh, communications, behavioral insight, even monitoring and evaluation, working with Encompass and trainings they offered, you know, really helped the organization change its uh, perspective and approaches in how we do our work. A middle Kennel Center for Democratic Studies, Mambaya House, before its days with history in gathering the support of MacArthur Foundation, it faced the arduous task of combining the normalization of corruption in Nigeria's democracy. Its advocacy efforts were often stalled by limited resources and disconnected networks. How did the center find a way forward? Our focus is enhancing democracy, accountability and transparency and helping democracy to grow in Nigeria. So when the Makato Foundation uh, was introduced, it further reinforced uh, our focus on building building the networks and working towards ensuring that Nigerians understand the values that are embedded in uh, any democracy. So in doing that, within uh, Mambaya House itself as an organization, the, we re, the, the, our attention was redirected towards ensuring that we build capacity of uh, CBOs, organizations that we're working with, so that they themselves, within themselves, they underst understood the essence of being transparent, building uh, uh, the facets of their institutions towards uh, transparency so that with that they can be equipped enough to carry on the work of anti-corruption. And again, within our organization, the emphasis uh, from the experience we had with MacArthur Foundation was in improving our efforts towards monitoring and evaluation. And in doing that, we were not just working with organizations, grassroots organizations, uh, CBOs alone, but we were ensuring that what we impacted on them, we followed up with all the tools we got from uh, the trainings we got from Makato Foundation to ensure that they imbibe these values and they practice them. The National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies relied heavily in merely seeking recourse to legal mechanisms in its institutional struggles and programming against corruption without fully tapping into more insightful behavioral change approaches before its focus was redirected through the agency and support of Mark Arthur Foundation. How did this happen and what steps did he take in bridging the extant gap towards a more impactful way of working? The National Institute is a multi research uh, institute as well as a think tank for government. We have conducted several research and one of the research we conducted was on uh, corruption in Nigeria. Uh, apart from that research, several other works that we have done, uh, always uh, the issue of corruption was always uh, coming up as a major challenge. And of course, uh, the National Institute deals with uh, policy actors uh, in both the public and the private sector. And of course, they are the ones that are implementing the policies or the anti-corruption policies or the laws, and of course those laws or institutions have not uh, made headway in terms of uh, addressing the issue of corruption. So the whole lesson is that look, there is corruption in Nigeria in every sector, public and private, and it affects governance, it weakens uh, public institutions, it puts uh, pressure on uh, national budget, and of course uh, it makes the institution not to uh, really deliver the required services. Uh, so when the MacArthur project came, it became an opportunity to look at how else can we engage these policy actors in the fight against corruption other than the use of the laws and the policies. So it was a big opportunity for us and uh, we came to it and uh, we've been working on that uh, as far back as uh, 2002 and uh, we have made headway in terms of uh, using behavioral approaches to uh, reduce corruption in Nigeria. The Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research encounters significant obstacles in producing impactful, evidence-based research 
to inform anti-corruption strategies prior to his partnership with and support from MacArthur Foundation. The Institute's research ultimately benefited from the scale and influence that came through, which is necessary for driving policy change. How did the Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research manage to concretely get its efforts enhanced? The, the most significant change for us is domestication of a behavioral change knowledge center. Because we, we know that the issue of corruption is, is complex. Um, what, I mean, we need to really domesticate it and institutionalize um, the solution, whatever solution we are able to come up with. So we now have a center that is functional. It is, um, um, it is housed in NISA and it is also active online, where people can access um, reports, briefs, or the, the, the solutions that have been designed for successful organization on uh, how they were able to, 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 cor to reduce the corrupt practices in their organization. So we are able to have all of this domicile in the center. So that is one significant thing. It was not there before, now we have it. Before the support of MacArthur Foundation, the Palace of Priests' Assembly had a tough call on effectively mobilizing faith leaders and their congregations against corruption. With limited resources to set up newer or deepen advocacy platforms, its anti-corruption efforts were restricted. How were the challenges squared with and in what manner did the Assembly's impact-making outreach come about? Our organization uh, the PPJ has been actively engaged in the Sean Corruption Project, mobilizing Christians against corruption. Uh, the project is aimed at mobilizing faith leaders and congregants to fight corruption using biblical principles as our foundation. Uh, our approach to work revolves around four key areas, which includes research, capacity building, advocacy and campaigns, and services. Through the Sean Corruption Project, aimed to tackle the deep-rooted issue of corruption within Nigeria, particularly focusing on the Pentecostal community. Uh, before the MacArthur funded uh, project, there has been a sense of complacency regarding corruption in the church and also in the wider society. Many people, many church leaders, believe that corruption was too ingrained uh, to be challenged or to be addressed effectively. So the project's aim was to change this mindset by building the capacity of over 8,000 Pentecostal leaders using the Bible to promote integrity, promote moral accountability. And uh, also, since the project's inception, we've seen a, a, a growing willingness within the Pentecostal faith community to address corruption openly, with many church leaders forming anti-corruption platforms and becoming vocal advocates for transparency, accountability, and participation. Policy Innovation Center earlier found it difficult to connect with the public in its anti-corruption efforts. The organization's strategies, while strong, did not fully onboard the behavioral drivers that influenced change before its partnership with MacArthur Foundation on the methodological and financial levels. How did this happen? The Policy Innovation Center is a unit, or would I say an initiative, of Nigerian Economic Summit Group. And one of the most fundamental problems we attempted, or we are attempting to solve within the anti-corruption, the corruption and anti-corruption space, is the fact that if you observe the, the anti-corruption funding landscape over the past five years or but let's say six years or thereabout, you would observe a, a general decline. The, the anti-corruption indices, particularly for developing countries, has not been that encouraging, particularly in Nigeria where we operate, right? So it's not still as, as, as this, the needle has not been adequately shifted as, as it should have been, right, within that period. And one of the things we observed is the fact that despite the proliferation of so much or so many initiatives and so many acts or whatnot that tried to or seek to address the matter of corruption, the challenge is that a lot of those initiatives that are driven by anti-corruption chain makers are lacking in one very fundamental thing and it is that they refuse or they fail to use behavioral insights or knowledge from behavioral science to, to develop the kind of initiatives that will really 
connect with people and make the kind of difference that they really should make. So the bottom line is that traditional methods over time have not succeeded in tipping the skill of anti-corruption success in developing countries and even in Nigeria specifically. And so we, we observed in our organization that there has to be much more than the use of traditional methods or the use of, of legal methods in shifting, the, or shifting the, the needle when it comes to the matter of resolving anti-corruption, resolving corruption, anti-corruption. And so the Policy Innovation Center under the MacArthur on Nigeria project teamed up with several other organizations, forward-thinking organizations as well, to see how we can leverage behavioral insights to develop initiatives that would solve, um, that would be much more effective uh, in, de in, in dealing with the matter of corruption within the country. And now, so prior to our work, you see that a lot of, a lot of anti-corruption initiatives go on and on and on and on with not adequate results, like you should have them. But post you realize that a lot of these anti-corruption team makers are now rethinking their approaches, rethinking their strategies, rethinking the way they are doing their work and using better strategies that really connect with humans that, that consider behavioral drivers in, in developing initiatives. And the use of this is what a major thing that has changed. The, the drivers of anti-corruption within the country, Nigeria, and are beginning to see new and different approaches as a result of our work on the MacArthur. And that for us is one fundamental change that is noteworthy. Before the MacArthur Foundation investments, Step Up Nigeria faced substantial barriers in embedding anti-corruption education in the school curriculum. Without structured support for its programming, the organization's efforts at orientating and shaping young minds towards the notion of integrity were limited at best. How did Step Up Nigeria manage to turn things around? So prior to MacArthur, we met a situation where schools were not really thinking about integrity and anti-corruption. They were not really thinking about the future of the leaders, only thinking about mathematics and education, but not so much around ethics and values and behavior. What we've been able to do post the MacArthur project is ensure that in schools across Nigeria, ethics and value-based anti-corruption education is being taught, ensuring that we have future leaders who will lead with integrity. Our project reached over 60,000 young people. But for us, we look at what will exist beyond Step Up Nigeria, and we've been able to partner with state-level basic education boards to ensure the approval of anti-corruption storybooks to teach literature, to teach English, to teach civic education and social studies for primary and junior secondary school students across Nigeria. And these states include Edo State, Kaduna State, Lagos State, the FCT, Imo State and Nasarawa State. And we're very proud that beyond our project, schools across Nigeria will begin to learn values-based education. So the Behavioral Change Cohort, I think holistically, the great joy that we've been able to see is that we've changed the attitudes, mindsets, and behaviors of Nigerians towards corruption. And I use those three words intentionally. Um, attitudes first, because people now see that corruption is something that can be learned. And in that sense, it can be unlearned. And so we know now that behavior can change. The Behavioral Change Cohort has been able to successfully change the mindsets and behaviors of young people, families, communities across Nigeria on why it is important to reject corruption and act with integrity. And I think those values will last beyond even the MacArthur Nigeria project. With MacArthur Foundation support, these organizations have become trailblazers in Nigeria's fight for accountability, integrity, and sustainable behavioral change. With the platform and support provided by the MacArthur Foundation support, what have these trailblazers been able to achieve collectively as members of the Behavior Change Cohort of the MacArthur Foundation? And one key thing we have seen in that space is to see that how behavioral change now affects policy development. Um, I think two years ago we had that conference where we're beginning to deliver how government can begin to design policies when we look at issues around behaviors which we need to change in public society. Otherwise, what we've also come across as a learning, um, people focus largely on systemic change, um, delivering computers, delivering services and all that. And what I mean, beyond every technology, beyond every service, there's a human being which is behind. And the behavior of that person cuts across their capabilities the opportunities which they find in, in, in these places, as well as what motivates them, and that affects their behavior largely. So we've seen in these spaces that 
behavior change is very key and keen to developing public policies. By bringing members who are addressing corruption from various angles together, everybody bringing forward his resources, both human, technical, and physical resources, pulling these resources together, we now have a comprehensive behavioral change program that can address corruption in our country. I have to thank MacArthur sincerely from my heart because uh, the program we had, the, the funding we have through with them has really changed so many things. Let me start from our organization. One, we are able to be much more organized, much more focused, and much more uh, professional in uh, the way we do things. That is why. Then two, the, the religious leaders that they believe they eat from hand to mouth, they were able to organize. Most most now, they have gotten the way in which they do their things that reduce or remove corruption almost completely. The, the, the money from the mosque now go to a particular post and for a particular project. Even the little money that imams are just like used to get that used to be wasted or end up, ended up in the pocket of one person is now being organized and the entire community are using it. And the most important thing is that even the people, the congregants, they are now beginning to listen to the imams because the imams, they also, uh, the, the, the project has also helped them to have something doing, to be able to have a bit of source of financing their own need without recourseing to their congregants. So it makes them to have confidence and freedom and strength in talking to people. And people are now taking it with joy, with gratitude and with uh, uh, sincerity. Things are now coming down. And they also the most similar was during the election because we have a special grant for the election. It reduced well, not only the, the crisis that is always associated with Nigerian election. If you notice the 2023 election, the, the crisis or that used to follow in lecture is reduced to barest minimum. With gratitude to God and with appreciation to Makato Foundation, this has really helped that people were able to come together and discuss their problem and work the solution by themselves. One key uh, impact the founding has made within the cohort is that element of empowering collaboration and therefore amplifying the, 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 the efforts, the messaging about anti-corruption because what the founding has done as far as this, uh, our uh, Bureau Change uh, Code is concerned is uh, yeah. bringing together the capacities of different organizations uh, under one umbrella so that the work of anti-corruption can further be uh, made easier. Of course, fighting corruption is not just a uh, uh, an individual affair is not a group affair, it's about collaborative effort. So what the founding has done by bringing us together into one cohort is ensuring that in each community across Nigeria, in each uh, uh, state across Nigeria, there is an organization uh, that is channeling its efforts towards anti-corruption. And to that extent, great result is, uh, has been achieved. Working as a cohort, you know, is very interesting. Interesting in that, you know, you meet different organizations uh, working in different fields, some policy, some, you know, working with churches and uh, mosques. You know, so the approaches, you know, and the uh, knowledge each organization brings to the table happens to change any member of the cohort, increase his knowledge and, you know, even if it means uh, diversifying, I mean, there are ways to do it now, having learned from fellow organizations. Makata has done well for us as an institute. Uh, two of us in 2018 attended a training organized, uh, by, I mean, uh, funded by Makato, which it brought uh, uh, Howard Kennedy School as well as the BIT. And uh, we attended that particular program. Later in 2019, again, the BIT came to Nigeria and we're also part of that program. Now, uh, it wasn't the behavioral approach, wasn't something that we were considering as a national institute, despite our engagement in terms of research and training. 
But that now introduced us to be aware approaches that today we have crop up uh, faculty members who have been trained in behavioral approaches, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria. We have uh, been trained by Chatham House. We attended training with uh, BIT in UK. And uh, today, the National Institute uh, for Policy and Strategic Study has what we call the NIPS uh, Behavioral Insight Team. And uh, this is made up of the various faculty members who have, uh, uh, have been trained and have uh, acquired knowledge and skills in terms of behavioral approaches. And it's helping NIPS not only in terms of the training uh, that we do, but even the approach to our work uh, in our various offices, uh, both in terms of uh, research, those in administration, as well as uh, even the finance, finance uh, department. Uh, as part of the behavioral change cohort, the most notable transformation has been the shift in how individuals approach corruption, approach the fight against corruption on a personal level. There is now a stronger sense of responsibility among leaders and followers alike to challenge unethical practices, both in private and public spheres. And the project has hosted the collective consciousness where corruption is no longer tolerated and there is an expectation for all members to lead by example. So one of the most significant change, or what you call MSc, in, in our work is that knowledge, the, the amplification of the knowledge, that awareness of the knowledge of, and the knowledge, not just knowledge, but the knowledge and the promise of behavioral insights in driving change, all right? Uh, both at, at the private sector level, the public sector level, and, 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 and the policy making level and decision making level and high levels and low levels across board. Since inception, the Akifade Foundation has been relentless in its commitment to eradicating corruption and promoting good governance and accountability. Our core focus is to tackle social injustice and increase transparency and accountability in Nigeria, galvanizing both individuals and institutions in our campaigns. This closely ties with the Behavioral Change Cohort's theory of change and the overarching goal for the On Nigeria project which is to support state and non-state actors to be more transparent about their actions and decision-making and to shun corruption. Efforts to champion democracy, redefine the understanding of corruption and embed anti-corruption training into the public service have strengthened national integrity. More so, a focus on behavioral drivers has shifted the approach to tackling corruption and social injustice while improving the way corruption is reported and fought at every level. Powerful narratives are now influencing the attitudes towards transparency and driving a collective movement towards a more accountable future. But beyond the milestones and successes, what are these organizations most grateful for in this transformative journey? We're most grateful um for the MacArthur Foundation is for allowing us the freedom, you know, to pursue our goals creatively and strategically. Also, um, for the provided guidance, um, offering support where necessary, um, which also empowered us in, in also taking an ownership because they, didn't, they, they, they allowed us that freedom. And then even the process in which they, they the support they gave us in creating meaningful and impactful, in, impactful work. I think that's one um, area we are most grateful for, yeah. We have to uh, appreciate MacArthur Foundation uh, because they came at a time when we actually were in need, but we did not know we are in need. So it, their, their intervention really helped us significantly. And, and personally, uh, I've learned something from the country director the which he is, pro is, pro is promoting a particular aspect of human life that he does not even know the name. I call it developmental humor. You, you, you use humor to develop, to get the best in men. You, you use humor to get the best in a particular project which you are doing. And you are doing the project, you are doing the work, you are happy, you are smiling, not knowing that you are actually achieving. I call him, say, he has developed what I call developmental humor. And that is I call him a specialist, that is Dr. Kone Shetima himself. I want to say thank you to him and all the team that has been with him, and to my own team too. It was a family affair. 
I think I'm most grateful to see that we have delivered some sort of positive messaging within the Nigerian society, within not just within Accountability Lab, but largely driven by the behavioral change cohorts and the work we do. Um, we've seen exciting partners um, using film, music, uh, movies, uh, and all kind of um, engagements with youths in creative and exciting ways. I think for me, that's one of the key things to have this conversation because we find out that people in the society are generally not interested in governance conversation, but we have found a way within the basic cohort to make it exciting and engaging. Um, secondly, I think I want to thank the MacArthur Foundation for carving that niche or creating that niche for us. Um, if you find what happens within other donor partners or international funders, and most people don't look at the behavior as a, as a thing to support. Um, they support system change, support public officers' trainings, provide computers, provide systems and all that. But again, for me, it's about capacity in terms of understanding how and why people behave the way they behave and trying to influence that. The MacArthur Foundation um, has created the opportunity for the cohorts and I think we've made a significant progress. And I think that's one of the reasons I want to thank them for. We are most thankful for the funding from MacArthur Foundation, also the guidance in the process. Because this funding, we've been able to have a more robust anti-corruption training curriculum, which has made possible the marriage between the law and order and the behavioral change approaches, which has given us now a very comprehensive program that is giving us better output, better outcome. Secondly, with the funding of this project, we have expanded our collaboration base. We now have so many other organizations, particularly the cohort members, and many other organizations that are now working with us, courtesy of this project. So our impact is getting wider because these organizations working with us are stepping down the training that we've given them to other members of society. Uh, I'm going to extend our appreciations to the entire Magato Foundation's organizations and specifically to Dr. Shatima and Hawa for their unwavering support to IDO24 and also for believing in what we are doing by providing the necessary support that help us to uh, achieve this tremendous success like I mentioned. And uh, again, why I mention uh, this support as uh, very something that we are proud and proud of all the time is because Akato Foundations has uh, believed in what we are doing because from the beginning of our partnership with Makato Foundations, we are working together with Equal Access as our partners. But along the line, in 2023 last year, Makato Foundations understand how we do and they have confidence in what we are doing and also believe that our work is also impacting the community and we can be able to stand alone on our feet to promote anti-corruption messages in Nigeria, which led us to be awarded with a contract directly independently to work on our own without any intermediary. So we really uh, thank uh, Makato Foundations for this support that they are making to IO24. I would like to say a very big thank you to MacArthur, um, the MacArthur team, for their responsiveness, for how supportive they have been. But also in general, I feel as though there's a big uh, debt of gratitude that we cannot pay for the 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 size of the bet that MacArthur has taken on Nigeria to stem corruption, I feel as though it's been so, um, it's almost humbling to think that there's, there's people who see the scale of the issue and are willing to match the scale of the issue um, and um, support us in that way um, across these different sectors, across these different organizations. Um, yes, I, I feel I'm just very humbled by uh, by the scale of the bet, a bet that I'm not sure I individually would have taken, but now it seems to be uh, paying off and I'm very excited for the future. The, the concepts of collaboration and uh, um, the level of awareness and um, the amount of messages and work that each of these organizations has done, I would say is a significant gain um, that the Behavioral uh, Change Cohort has achieved. Since the center was established in 2001, the center has never gotten funding 
who support, financial support, as it has gotten from Makato Foundation. In terms of institutional capacity, in terms of building the skills of the staff, in fact, to exemplify, if you go to Mambaya House, we have alternative electricity supply. We are able to work 24 hours, I mean, seven days a week without any hindrance. And in terms of building skills, we, I can only, I can't count how many training workshops our staff have uh, engaged through Makato Foundation. So in terms of, let's say, having access to modern tools of uh, implementing project in terms of uh, getting exposed to new ways of implementing projects, we have, in short, benefited extensively through the Makato Foundation uh, support. Makato has done well for us as an institute. Uh, two of us in 2018 attended a training organized, uh, by, I mean, uh, funded by Makato, which it brought uh, uh, Harvard Kennedy School as well as the BIT. And uh, we attended that particular program. Later in 2019, again, the BIT came to Nigeria and we're also part of that program. Now, uh, it wasn't the behavioral approach, wasn't something that we were considering as a national institute, despite our engagement in terms of research and training. But that now introduced us to behavioral approaches that today we have crop of uh, faculty members who have been trained in behavioral approaches, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria. We uh, have been trained by Chatham House, we attended training with uh, BIT in UK. I am most grateful for the Makato Foundation's investment in the moral and social fabric of our communities. Their support allowed us to empower leaders, allowed us to shape ethical perspectives and foster real change. I would like to thank the Foundation for believing in our vision and providing the resources to challenge corruption from the grassroots, building momentum for a more just and a transparent society. We are grateful uh, to the Makato Foundation for the opportunity to be able to work within the space. Yeah, the Makato Foundation is, is, is renowned to be among the top four of, of, of the biggest players within the philanthropic space of funding anti-corruption work globally. And we're grateful to be a part of, or to be one of the recipients of that fund, that granting. Step Up, we're thankful that the Makato Foundation took a chance with Step Up. Um, there's a lot of anti-corruption work being done in Nigeria and even in the behavioral change space, but our work was different because we targeted children. And most people say that children are too young to learn about corruption. They don't understand. Um, our argument was that they do understand because they live in a corrupt society every day. And the earlier we can catch them young and change their mindsets, then the better chance we have in future to have leaders with integrity. And so we're thankful that the MacArthur Foundation saw our vision. Um, and even though it's a long-term vision, which we may not see for another 10, 20 years, um, depending on how long it takes these young people to become leaders, that investment in the lives of young Nigerians will definitely be that seed that we require to see a new generation of leaders who act and lead differently. So we say thank you to the MacArthur Foundation. Um, our project has been able to deliver two virtual reality films, four animated cartoon series, four anti-corruption storybooks, and a variety of other tools that will last beyond the On Nigeria project. And we say thank you for empowering young Nigerians to take a stand for integrity.